I'm constantly moving it around. I still have garlic pieces in there. I don't necessarily want to sit in one place for too long. I'm also pretending like I have a lot to do because there's only five ingredients. Today we're in the test kitchen making five ingredient pasta dishes. I crave pasta every single day. Pasta is sort of like looking into a mirror and being like, who am I today? Five ingredients is enough to make something that doesn't feel like you've sacrificed on flavor at all. That's good. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Pasta for me is almost equal to life. <laughs> you know, there were some rules to this challenge, five ingredients being the main one, and uh, we had a couple freebies you get. The pasta being one of them, this is the one I'm going to be using, it's a little Annaletti. I refer to it as an adult spaghettio. It's just a really fun, easy shape to eat. It's great in really loose sauces. I got some extra virgin olive oil, some butter, and uh, some salt. They gave me salt and pepper, very kind once again. So those are my free ingredients. What I think is nice about this pasta dish is that it, I personally like food cold and leftovers. I think uh, certain pasta dishes, especially ones that aren't like a cream poured, but more of a tomato, uh, you can kind of get away with eating them cold a little better. It'll be a nice, saucy, fully covered little noodle ringo and a uh, little cheesy, little shrimpy. Everyone's made a version of this at least some point in their life. We're gonna have the shrimp real quick. Just right down long ways, I'll nip it at the tail so we just get the full meat and the tail stay on there. And I like how they curl. Instead of just being like a, just like a, it does like a, you know? And it'll make a nice little bite. Yeah, let's pick some herbs real quick. Parsley, um, you know, it's, it's versatile. I love it, it's got a deep vegetal flavor. All right, so we got our parsley and then a little tarragon. And I'm just gonna pick the leaves off on this one, all right? All right, we're gonna give the parsley just a little rough, a little rough go. Let's get the water going. Yeah, that's about right. All right, so we're gonna salt it to taste like the Atlantic Ocean. Not the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. And what I do like about dried pasta is that it, you know, you can, it comes together pretty quick. The hardest part's boiling the water. A little olive oil. A couple tablespoons there, no big deal. We're gonna add this slowly, all right? I forgot I didn't need to sweat anything, so adding your loose tomatoes to your hot oil, you're gonna make a mess. That was a big no-no. But we did it anyway. You know, I got a little ADD, I suffered my whole life, so I don't wanna go walking around and start telling stories about squirrels or something, because then we're gonna overcook our pasta. Oh yeah, yeah, go time. Whenever you make pasta, everyone knows this. And if you don't, now you do. Save a little bit of the water so you can help build your emulsified sauce. We cooked our pasta al dente, and now we're just gonna finish it off in our sauce. Yeah, there we go. Shrimpos. And these are gonna cook quick, like real quick. In our pasta water. If you learn anything from this episode, let's put a little bit of butter in your tomato sauce. A little Parmesan cheese here. And now we added the herbs real quick. They don't need to go cooking heavy. Boom, that's kind of it. Those shrimp are, are done. We're gonna give it 30 seconds on low. All right, we're ready. It's easy as it gets, you know? Plate this bad boy right up. We're gonna add some more Parmesan cheese and a little, little black pepper. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, a little Annaletti shrimp adult spaghettio. For all of those viewers out there that weren't allowed to eat spaghettios as a child like myself, this one's for you. It's delicious. Creamy. It's saucy. Very saucy, and that's, oh, it's good. It's actually, it almost does have kind of a spaghetti. I mean, that, those tomatoes do have a little bit of a sweetness to them. Nice little marriage of flavors again. Nice little marriage of simple flavors that, you know, anyone can do. They come together super quick. Like I said, the longest part's making the pasta. And you can even do that the day before. I wanted this to be super easy, super low lift, so everything's gonna happen in one pan. It's my spicy, creamy, saucy pantry pasta. For my pasta choice, I decided on bucatini because um, I think for a light, creamy sauce, a long noodle is really nice, and bucatini is tubular, so there's a hole running through the center, which is a great place for more sauce to land. Everything comes together in one pan, so you're not like worrying about a colander, boiling a huge pot of water for like 15 minutes. You can literally start and finish in like one sitting. It'll take you 20 minutes. So I'm gonna start by just putting the pasta straight in the pan. You wanna finely chop the parsley. It should sort of like melt into the sauce. It's definitely important to get everything done before you go to the stove because everything comes together so quickly at the stove and you wanna sort of be active while you're there tossing and turning the pasta. I like to thinly slice the garlic so it can sort of melt into the pasta sauce. I'm gonna grate parm and I'm gonna add capers and then Calabrian chili paste. This stuff can be pretty spicy, so if you have a low spice tolerance, I wouldn't use anything more than like a teaspoon. The chilies almost get a little bit pickly from 
the vinegar and it's salty, it just brings a lot of heat and flavor, not, as opposed to just using chili flakes where you're just gonna get heat. So almost everything that I need is in the saucepan, so I'm gonna take it to the stove and we're gonna finish it off there. I'm gonna add some salt, some olive oil, two and a quarter cups of water for six ounces of noodles so that everything cooks um, in the right amount of time. Put the heat up to high um, and bring it to a boil. While it heats up, I'm just gonna move the pasta around a little bit just to get it started, and you wanna keep doing this throughout the process. I know it might seem nerve-wracking to put your pasta and water in one pan, um, but it's super easy and it works really well because you get pasta water from the fact that the boiling is happening in this one pan, so you get that creamy, starchy quality. The pasta cooks through, it absorbs the right amount of water, leaving you with enough to get a sauce as well. Another really great thing is that the pasta is sort of like swimming in this like flavorful water, and all of that is sort of being absorbed into the noodle. You can see that the water is starting to get like murky, and that's from the starches releasing into the water, and so we're already sort of getting a thicker sauce. This needs like another minute or so, so I'm gonna add the parsley and most of the parm. It looks perfect. There's like a little bit of a glossy sauce happening. I'm gonna just taste it to make sure it's fully cooked through. I'm gonna finish it with a little bit more fresh parsley, some parm, and then my freebie ingredient, black pepper. It's done, it's ready, it looks so cute. So you can definitely taste the capers. It's nice and spicy from the Calabrian chili paste. The garlic gives it some nice depth and the parm just you know, amps up the saltiness and gives it that creamy texture. I love pasta and this is my favorite way to make it when I'm feeling lazy and I just don't wanna bother, but I still want a lot of flavor. Okay, so I'm really excited to be sharing this pasta dish with you. It's inspired by the time that I spent in Italy. Um, I lived in Florence for five years and a lot of the dishes that we would eat after coming home from a night out um, would be the most simple dishes, but also the most delicious. My dish today is pancetta with piselli, which are green peas. I'm going to work today with the titolini. They're really cute, really tiny, uh, and I think that they're going to soak up the sauce really well. This pasta dish works for me um, because it is fatty and has a lot of flavor from the pancetta, the peas, bring a nice color, a bright punch, a little bit of texture. Um, and it's lightly saucy from the white wine, but the cheese definitely adds everything that you need it to make it amazing. I like to smash the garlic because I feel like the flavor of the garlic actually is able to come out without getting too bitter. This way you get to lightly infuse the oil, um, but still get the flavor. The trick for me personally for really great pasta is salting your water. I think a lot of people forget to do that. These Ditalina pasta are really tiny, um, so the cooking time on these is going to be much faster than regular pasta. So I'm going to wait a little bit to throw that in so that the timing of everything can come together. I'm gonna use a mix of olive oil and butter. I le like using butter and olive oil because the mix of the fat, it's gonna be more creamy, it's gonna be richer. So as it goes, I'm gonna um, go ahead and throw my smashed garlic in. But I'm just gonna let the garlic flavors infuse with the oil. The pancetta also is very savory, has a lot of fat in it, so um, we can just be aware of the amount of salt that we're adding in the ends. The reason why I like pancetta um, is because as you can see, there's a lot more meat to fat ratio, whereas I think with bacon, when it comes sliced, it just melts. Uh, you don't get that bite of fattiness that you're looking for. So I'm actually gonna throw my pasta in here now, and then make sure that you actually stir your pasta in the pot so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. The pancetta is starting to render out the fat and then this is the perfect time to add the white wine. Woo! White wine um, will help bring in acidity to this pasta and helps give you a nice little base for the sauce as well. So the texture on the noodles that I'm looking for is al dente. People are like, what is al dente? And it means to the tooth. That means you want it to have a nice bite to it. I think we're there. Go ahead and add some pasta water. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter to emulsify this pasta, add more flavor, make it a little bit more creamy. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add my frozen peas. I think so much of like the American culture, it's like add cream to make it creamy. If you have butter and you have the pasta water at home, that's all you really need. And I mean, look at all this like beautiful fat from the pancetta. Like, you wanna be able to taste the ingredients. If you add cream, you're gonna take that away. All right, so it looks like we're ready to plate. All it needs is the cheese. So I've got parm that I'm shaving on here. I'm doing a little pre-shave and then I'm gonna mix everything together. It definitely is like really cutesy using ditalini. Yeah, I mean, it kind of is like a little kid dish, but I mean, it's perfect. I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper and then finish it with a little bit of olive oil. It smells delicious. All the ingredients in this dish are like almost the same size. I'm always the type of person that's searching for the perfect bite. The peas add a nice like sweetness, like creaminess texture to it. The cheese is nice and sharp. The black pepper adds a nice little hint of spice. It just like really takes me back home to Italy. I think that if I was late night drunk, I'd be really happy eating this too. <laughs> I'm making a very special summer balsamic pasta. Sun Gold tomatoes are the shining star of this dish. I typically grow them in my backyard every year. They're sweeter than most other tomatoes, so I always go with them over like your regular cherry tomato or aroma tomato. Today I'm working with these fun little trumpet shaped noodles. Let me tell you about this texture here, okay? Those ridgy little pieces along the trumpet shapes. You'll get some garlic treasures, you'll get get a little piece of tomato, worn down tomato that gets stuck in those ridges or in the little trumpets. And it's just like these nice little flavors on flavors. I'm going to mince garlic. I love a fresh herb moment whenever I get the chance. So we're just gonna do some nice torn chunks of basil. That's it, that's the prep, it's nice and simple. So I put my hair up because you know, <laughs> we don't need any dreads on fire, you know what I'm saying? So oil's feeling pretty good. Gonna go ahead and add that garlic. We're also gonna add a generous amount of red pepper flakes. I like heat. Garlic's looking browned. We're gonna add our tomatoes, our halved tomatoes. Cooking half of the tomatoes in this fashion where they're halved, it's gonna create this juicy, jammy sauce. Um, and you're just gonna want to allow those tomatoes to gently cook down. After you kind of see your tomatoes glistening a bit, you're gonna wanna apply a little pressure to those tomatoes because that's gonna be the base for your sauce. So at this point, actually, our tomatoes are starting to break down. So I'm just gently applying pressure with the back of the spoon. And you can notice the sauce is getting kind of glittery and shimmering a bit, which is a great sign. I'm gonna add our basil that we tore, and I'm also gonna add salt. And our trumpets are in. These tomatoes should reduce a bit and get like nice and softened so that you can get like these nice juicy textural bursts of flavor while you're eating your pasta. Oh man, this sauce is looking delish. Getting that basil, garlic, deep tomato smell. Oh, I love it so much. Mmm. It's so rich and fatty and flavorful. It's like exactly where I want it. So I'm just adding balsamic and it'll kind of mute out. And then we'll add some more at the end for an additional burst of flavor because I really want that balsamic to shine through. All right, let's try our pasta. Mm. That's it. We're gonna add our pasta to that sauce. And you can see it just provides this really gentle coating. You can already see the pasta sauce and the basil and the garlic is sticking to those ridges, which is really nice. Look at this glimmering goddess here, okay? We're going to get some basil in there, fresh basil. And I like a little additional balsamic glaze over the top. It just looks really pretty as well. And a little bit goes a long way, but it really provides a nice depth of flavor. This is my Sun Gold balsamic pasta dish. She's glossy, she's elegant, she's sweet, salty, fatty. Mm. So good. Especially when you get like a full tomato, it just bursts in your mouth and adds to that saucy feel. Dish comes together quickly. Nice texture play, very bright, good punch of heat, and it's really good hot or cold, so I think it's the perfect summer pasta dish. If you're only gonna have five ingredients, might as well just do the most luxurious thing that you can with what you have, and treat yourself with all of these really incredible ingredients that maybe you don't usually use, but feel special because they are. 
I am making a squid ink based pasta with cured egg yolk and batarga. I chose to work with the spaghetti alla catara. If you look very closely to the actual shape of the noodle, it's more of a square shape, and that's because it's pressed through this sort of like guitar string device. It kind of creates these like very like hard edges. It's not too far away from something that you've maybe already had, but this is just like a little added detail to make your night feel a little bit more fancy. So oftentimes you'll hear it referred to as squid ink. Today I'm using cuttlefish ink because it's a bit easier to find and you can buy it online. It kind of adds this unexpected, fishy, salty flavor. One of my favorite things to do at home that I keep in my pantry is curing egg yolks. This is a two to one salt to sugar mix. Create a divot drop the egg in, cover it up with the same mixture. Super easy to make and it adds a bit of richness to your dish. I'm gonna rinse them off because I don't want any of the excess salt, but it has a sort of creaminess on the center. It's like you break it open kind of like a caramel candy and it kind of adds more wetness to your dish. Batarga is the pancetta of the sea, if you will. One of my favorite pastas to eat is a carbonara. And so I wanted something that had that jowl pancetta-like feel, but still in the seafood family. And it's going to add that depth and contrast to the dish that I'm looking for. I'm using a white wine. This is a pecorino. Just, just something that's a bit more dry and crisp. First of all, if something that you're not gonna drink, then I'm probably not gonna add it to my food. And I think that also you should treat yourself while you're making pasta. So of course I'm gonna use a quarter cup of this wine, but what happens with the rest of it? That's kind of my business. And I'm waiting for my garlic to get hot. <laughs> I'm going to add my squid ink. What we're looking for is not only the color to add some sort of characteristics because the dish is so simple, but we're also looking for that sort of well-rounded seafoody flavor to kind of come out as well. And add about a quarter cup of white wine to the pan. Go ahead and drop my noodles in. All right, six minutes. This is looking good. The garlic is obviously very present, and so is that sort of fishiness that you're getting from the actual squid ink. But what I'm also gonna do is add butter into it. And butter also helps to kind of like bring everything together in the pan. Once it cooks down enough, we want for the sauce to be slightly sticky, but we also want it to be glossy and just kind of velvety. If you kind of scrape the bottom of your pan, you can also see how quickly the water pools back into place. That's how you know that the evaporation of the wine is happening and everything's kind of coming together. I'm gonna quickly transfer the noodles to making sure it's coated properly in the pan. Becomes super black, super luscious. So I'm gonna top the squid ink pasta with my cured egg yolk. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to just give a good dusting of our batarga on top of that. And so we have this beautiful sort of like golden yellow cloud and then for good measure, because I think you do always need like a little bit of spice, as I'm just gonna shave like whole peppercorns. So this is my fancy as hell, squid ink, cuttlefish in parentheses, batarga pasta with cured egg yolk. All right, so let's see what happens. Ooh. Oh, she juicy. I could cry. It's like a Gushers. Does anyone have Gushers growing up? Hell yeah. Honestly, a little finishing salt, why not? Batarga has this really nice cured fish moment. So on top of the squid ink itself, it is adding so much flavor and also like an, another textural element to the whole dish. This is satisfying not only because it is a delicious feeling meal, but it also feels like it is something special with not a ton of ingredients. And that's really what you're looking for is like, you know, if you're coming home from a busy day of work and you don't really feel like cooking and you don't want to put too much time in it, this came out together in like less than 20 minutes give or take the curing of the egg. However, if you have it in your pantry already, you're good to go. Oh, I don't know how you're supposed to make this dish without garlic. Damn you and your five ingredients. I don't know how I left garlic out. I probably just assumed that it was like a freebie. Like, what kind of sick world is this? I gotta choose parsley over garlic? Never doing this again.